What's going on guys, my name is Colin Ross. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be giving you an overview of my 3D workflow, how I go from After Effects to Buju to 3DS Max and then back to After Effects. So I'm not gonna be showing you how to achieve the effect you just saw, rather I'm gonna be showing you the process I took to achieve that result. Real quick again, just before we start, we're starting in After Effects, then we're going into Buju, we're 3D motion tracking, then we're exporting that 3D camera to 3ds max and rendering out an object that we're then going to bring back into after effects to make it look like it's actually a part of our scene to get started once you have your composition trimmed up to the length that you want while you're in your composition hit Control m and this is going to bring up the render queue click right here where it says lossless and then right under here where it says format we're going to change the format to an image sequence and we're going to pick jpeg sequence click format options and drag it to like eight or nine. It doesn't have to be the highest quality, but you still want a good quality image for your motion tracking. And if you click this right here, you can change the file destination you're rendering at. So I'm gonna go here and um, in here, my 3D workflow. So I'm gonna create a new folder called tutorial, enter it, hit new folder and change it to seek. This is short for sequence. We're gonna click here and then, you know, just name the file tutorial and this is gonna keep everything organized. This is about to render out an image sequence and all the images are about to be stored in this folder. Click save and then hit render. So once that's done, open up Buju here and right here under the toolbox, click import sequence. Then we're going to navigate to where our source footage is. So mine is in the E drive under my 3D workflow under tutorial, seek, and then click the first image and that'll import your entire image sequence. This is where you have to decide what move type your camera was moving. In this instance, the camera was moving in 3D space. So we're gonna be doing a free move track compared to if you were panning on a tripod, that's a nodal pan. Basically, if your camera's on a tripod, click nodal pan, and if your camera is free moving, hit free move, pretty simple. You wanna make sure you have the same frame rate selected that your source footage was shot in. You can go into After Effects and see right here that my footage was shot in 23.976. Go back into Buju, change this to 23.976 hit apply. For whatever reason, Buju has a little glitch right here and it changes the frame rate back to 25. Just hit that and change it to 23.976 again. Hit apply and then click close. The reason I create an image sequence is because Buju doesn't track H.264 files as good as it does image sequences. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is add a poly mask right here in the very far distance of my image. This is gonna make sure that it's gonna track more of what's in my foreground because I wanna add something right here on the bridge. I don't wanna add anything in the background. I'm also gonna bump up the contrast over here so it's a little easier for the tracker to pick up all the contrast in the image. I'm gonna hit track features, advanced. I'm gonna change the sensitivity all the way up, change the max search distance to 50%, hit start. It's gonna do its best to put a bunch of tracking markers in your scene and try and figure out what the camera was doing in real life. Now that that's done, when you scrub through your footage, you can see Buju does a really good job at holding on to all these points in your scene. But what you wanna to do to help it out before you try to solve the camera, this, this hasn't created a 3D camera in your scene. I'm gonna pick a couple points that I think are grabbing onto the scene well. I'm gonna click one, hold down control, and then continually clicking other points that I think are tracking well to the scene. Some further in the background, some closer, some off to the left over here. Don't click too many. The more you click, the longer it's going to take for the computer to track your camera. So I'm gonna maybe click like eight, nine, 10. Right click one of them and click gold. This is gonna tell Buju that these are great tracks and use them as reference for the other tracks. I'm gonna go up to 3D task, hit solve camera, optimize camera pass smoothest, and then hit start. Let it do its thing again. This is a little bit quicker, usually if it isn't too difficult of a solve. And boom, now you can see all those track features were turned into actual 3D data points. This is kind of hard to see just from a 2D image, but if you go up here and click 3D, if you hold shift and left mouse click, you can kind of rotate around this 3D image and you can see that the camera is here. Here are all of these 3D points in space. So I'm gonna drag it up so it's almost like an orthographic viewpoint. I'm gonna click this button right here so I can edit the coordinate system and then hit the rotate. And then I'm gonna drag along the red here. So if you go back into the 2D space and select points on the plane, you're you're trying to add an object to and then go back to the 3d you can see where all those points are selected I want to move these points so they're at the original coordinate system after I've rotated I'm gonna to go to the move and then move these over and then down if you shift click and right click you can zoom into the image so you can see more detailed drag this up shift left click again and drag around drag this to the coordinate point zero zero right here in the middle and that is looking good now that we have our camera match move how are we going to get this into as a camera in 3ds max and then add objects to our scene there and it's pretty simple all you have to do is go up to the export tab up here export camera solve but this is where whatever 3d program you're deciding to use you would just select so i'm using 3ds max if you're exporting back to after effects you 
can do After Effects, but I'm using 3ds Max, so I'm gonna click that. And then you want to unselect Use Format Default for Start Index Null Size. Um, hit zero and then click scale scene by 100. This is going to scale your scene up just a little bit. So once you do that, browse to where you want to save your file. I'm going to do it again in um, my 3D workflow. And in the tutorial folder, I'm going to create a new folder called Buju. And I'm exporting the camera, hit save, and then that should save your camera as a script. So then we're gonna go in 3ds Max. So we saved a Max script out of Buju that contains all the camera data that we're gonna import. So we wanna go up to scripting, run script, navigate to your file, mine was in, you know, tutorial Buju, click the Max script, but what you're gonna see, there's a syntax error in a little bit of the script, which you just have to edit a little bit. For whatever reason, Buju includes a piece of image sequence that doesn't work with 3ds Max. So you just have to click OK, select here and drag up to the point where it says file name and then just hit backspace click file save and then exit out scripting and just run the script again and it'll work just fine this just imported a 3d camera into 3ds max just like the one we had in buju and what i do here is i select every single point i go up here to group and hit group again and then rename it camera what i also do with the camera selected here is go up to the hierarchy and affect the pivot point to be here in the original origin at zero zero. This is just gonna make it scale and rotate around the plane that we want to. I know this is a lot of information coming at you very fast. I realize a lot of people subscribe to this channel just want After Effects tutorials and they might not be interested in this. I just wanted to share my workflow in case you guys were interested in learning this because, but if this is something you're interested in, comment down below and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. I realize there's so many steps, there's so many new things to learn when you're working with 3D. But now what we're gonna do is we're going to I always select the bottom right quadrant I'm gonna hit shift F and this is going to make it so it displays the actual aspect ratio of my camera and right here where it says perspective I'm gonna click cameras and then go into my camera if I hit alt W in 3ds max it will maximize the viewport I'm hovering over you can kind of see that the camera is moving just how it did in Buju and then what I want to do is I want to hit alt B and change the background to a file image map I'm gonna click use files animate background go here to files and browse and select the image sequence that we already rendered out of After Effects. And then I'm gonna hit the first image and then click sequence, hit open, okay, apply to active view. So we we're up to the point where we have this image in our background and we have our camera imported and it's all lined up. Since we're trying to add something to this road right here, what we wanna do is align this coordinate system to be like it's on the plane of this road. I'm gonna rotate this so it's going at the same angle of this road and then I'm gonna hit select the uniform scale and scale this up so that the grid is scaled down. And as you can see, it now looks like there's a grid on the road that's perfectly tracked in our scene. Now anything that we draw and create in 3ds Max will be tracked to the scene. Let's say I wanna add a few pyramids. So I'm gonna add one here. So because I imported my camera, everything is going to be correctly on this plane. So as you can see, as you drag through, it should be properly tracked to your scene, which is pretty darn cool. So now how are we gonna render this and bring it into After Effects? And the, the answer to this is an image sequence with alpha. So we're gonna go up to render, hit render setup. I'm just gonna do the traditional scan line render because it's the quickest, it's not gonna be good quality. I'm gonna change the width and height to 1080 just to save some time. I'm gonna go to files. I'm gonna name this tutorial. And then where it says save as type, I'm gonna hit PNG image sequence, I'm gonna hit save. And then right here, just click RGB 48 bit and make sure you preserve the alpha channel so when you bring it into After Effects, there's no background. And then make sure the active time segment is selected so it renders for every single frame in the sequence. And then I'm just gonna hit render. So once that's done, hop back into After Effects and uh, this is the easy part, click file, import file, and then navigate to what we just rendered, Colin 2017, My 3D Workflow, Tutorial. Oh, I accidentally saved the render outside here. So go into your render, hit the first image in your sequence, make sure PNG sequence is selected here, and then click Import. Then you wanna right click this and click Interpret Footage, Main, and then change it to whatever frame rate your sequence was. This tripped me up for the longest time because nothing would stay tracked correctly, but then I realized it wasn't playing at the frame rate that I rendered it at. So just click 23.976. I'm gonna drag this on top of our footage. Since I rendered out at 1080p, I'm gonna have to scale it up to 200%. If you render through there, everything is tracked and that is pretty much the completed 3D workflow of how I go from After Effects 
to tracking in Buju and then importing that to 3ds Max and rendering out an animation. Hopefully you enjoyed this insight to how I create some of the visual effects that I do on the shorts on this channel. If you found this video informational, if you liked it, leave me a like. If you didn't, leave me a dislike and let me know how I can improve my tutorials, my videos in the future. And as always, subscribe if you enjoy my content. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm uploading a video every single day for the rest of 2017. Peace, bye, peace, peace. Thank you.